Hi YouTube world, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. I am Adrian. I live in New York City and I love playing with makeup. This series is my shop, my stash series, where at the beginning of the week, I looked around, grabbed a bunch of products and including new products that I had gotten in and played around with them so that I can make smart decisions about what stays, what goes and all that good stuff. I call the series My Week in Makeup. And I would be foolish if I didn't mention that, obviously, I live in New York. New York right now, we are going through a bit of crisis. I'm sure you all have seen it in the news, but there are a lot of protests and things. And I feel so, I feel so much about this. I am not someone to typically get all riled up about the news. There are terrible things that happen all over the world. But this week in particular, here in the States, just these last few days, I really don't understand. I really don't understand how we're going to get out of this mess that we are in. Um, I'm just at a loss right now, really. So I'm going to take this moment to escape. I hope that this becomes an escape for you because this channel started for me as an escape and it remains that way for me. This channel started during the pandemic because I needed an outlet. I needed an outlet to get out of this depression that I felt and there was also lots of family stuff happening. Uh, I was in the process of losing my father and all of those things were just compounding in my life and I needed an outlet. And so I really love what happens here on my channel. I love connecting with you all over makeup, but we all know this is not about makeup. This is about connecting with one another and seeing each other maybe through makeup, but ultimately it's about connection. And that is the most valuable thing for me. So. I really appreciate that you're here. I really appreciate that you clicked on this video. I tried to change my mood today, though, by putting everything neon I had. <laughs> my Golden Girls t-shirt I love so much. Um, because the Golden Girls <sighs> were some of the best people portrayed on TV, right? Mm. Let me get to a point in life where my I can manifest a situation like the Golden Girls. Let's dive into makeup. I played around with a lot. And because I had a bout of allergies, I didn't get to play around with eye makeup that often. Though I did make some decisions on it. But you will see when we get there. I also used this week the Tarte Maracuja Tinted Hydrator. I have this in a mini. I have this in 20N Light Neutral. This... I'm getting rid of. I don't understand it for myself. It's, it barely has any coverage. The color is fine, but it's not the most hydrating for me. I don't know what this is for. It doesn't have SPF built into it. It doesn't have any additional skincare and I have combo skin. I can't layer lots and lots of products without eventually breaking out. And so because this doesn't offer me at least another skincare benefit, I don't, and I don't even really love the finish or anything. So this one is a dud. Another product that I tried this week is the Tula Skincare Radiant Skin Brightening Serum Skin Tint with Broad Spectrum SPF. I actually just had a sample card of this. I tried the color Light Neutral 5. I did not like this at all. This had absolutely no tint. I didn't find the texture of the of the product to be wonderful. I much prefer using either for sunscreen, that e.l.f. or the Super Goop or even my Elta MD skincare. Those are all better sunscreens than the texture of this one. And I would have to put on something over because that tint, it's just doesn't do anything. So I'm glad I got a sample card because it's, it kind of got it out of my system. Finally got the right shade of the Ulta Beauty Moisturizing Foundation Stick. I wear mine in light to medium neutral. It's this product here. I'm wearing it today lightly. 
This is a great shade match for me. It took me three tries to get it right. Three tries. I mean, really, Ulta. This is the most abysmal like line when it comes to describing shades and then how the shades from a gradient perspective go from light to dark. It makes no sense. Light, the shade light in this, which you would think would be lighter than light to medium neutral. Light was so dark, it was like a contour color. It was had like a gray undertone and it was a contour color, very similar to Amber from Fenty, the matchstick. I don't know, it was very weird. But I did like this foundation stick. This is a very good foundation stick. It's very creamy. Um, sits on top of the skin really nicely. I wore it over the Super Goop. I can't wait to try it over other items, but I did really like this. So I'm glad I found a foundation stick that is affordable because the only other ones that I have are, you know, higher end. I have the Huda and I have the Merit, but I do like foundation sticks in general. And so this one I'm happy to have. I've been very impressed with some of Ulta, Ulta's products. And so this was impressive, just really hard to find the right mix. Another coverage products I tried, this is brand new. This is the MAC Studio Fix Everywhere All Over Face Pen NC20. It's this product here. This is a weird product. So this is the dispenser. And you have to click only like a half click, not even a, so you click it here. It's like an injection. It's, it's weird. Um, you click like just the slightest bit, like I, I'm not even clicking a full click, just the tiniest bit and the product comes out. And this is a concealer, but it's a bit thinner than their regular concealer but it's thicker than a foundation. And so how I've been using this, pinpoint where I wanna cover. So probably just the center of my face a little bit with a product like this. And then I will powder and kind of put all my color products. So summer is kind of a perfect time to be using this, but I don't know, I'm, I'm not convinced about the mechanism of delivery. I think people are really gonna struggle with this. I also don't know about just like putting this on everywhere. So I'm still toying around with it. I do like it. It's a good color for me. The NC20 is a good match, but we're gonna keep playing around with it. I was just so curious about it. I had to pick it up. Powders, 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 powders. I had this Super Goop Resetting 100% Mineral Powder SPF. This one here, where you just kind of open it up, open the, open the container up a bit and the SPF comes out of the center here of the brush. So you can touch up your foundation on the go or your SPF with this powder. I don't know that this is really like the smartest product. I'm still gonna use it. I'm gonna move it to my purse and it's gonna kind of live in my purse because I do find it to be a nice setting powder in a way um like throughout the day if my if my face gets a little shiny but i don't know that it's the best way to deliver extra spf on the skin i also use the mac light plus mineralized skin finish natural this one here i love this powder i think it's a beautiful powder it's not a totally flat powder but i can wear this with just sunscreen and I feel like I have enough coverage. For bronzer, I used a couple of different products. It's from Merit. This is called the Bronze Balm, I believe, and it's in the color Sen. So this is a bit darker than I thought I would pick up. But let me just swatch it for you here. But I really like the color. It's a little bit warmer. I just thought the colors that were lighter were a bit too light, but it's an easy to blend, buildable product. And I like how nice it just kind of leaves my skin. So this was my primary kind of bronzer 
I do really enjoy it. It reminds me very much of the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer. I like these textures when they're not so, so pigmented and have a little bit of a sheen to them so it gives off a glow so it's not completely flat. I like this. So I do like this product. I'm 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 happy I picked it up on the sale. The other bronzers I used were in these trios by Ulta. These are like little bento boxes similar to the Kaja trios. I've actually never used any of the Kaja trios. I've always been curious but always Something about the color stories have fallen short, but I saw these at Ulta and I was so intrigued. I picked up this one first. So this is in the shade Pop of Petals. So it comes with a blush, but I will start with the bronzer. So it comes first with a bronzer. It's a very creamy emollient product. So that is the bronzer here. And you'll see it is very similar in tone to that Merit. It's much more pigmented, but as I blend it out, it's very close, very close to the, the Merit. So of course I liked it and it lasts very well on the skin. It also has a highlighter, which I will swatch for you. It's a very subtle highlight, kind of a champagne color. And then the blush, which is this one here, very beautiful. Um, I'll swatch it right here. And it's like a pink with a, a little bit of a warm pink. And I think it's a very flattering shade. I liked it so much that when I was in store, I was able to swatch the darker version. This is in Berry Glam. I will start with the bronzer for you. It's the bronzer I'm actually wearing on my skin right now. So this is that bronzer. So you'll see it's just slightly deeper but again, easy to sheer out, but you can build it up. I will also show you the highlight, which I am wearing on my skin as well. And because these are very emollient highlights, this one is a little more golden. I find that they can blend out and really work for any skin tone. And the blush is really pretty. You can wear this probably too as a lipstick, but it blends out really nicely. Blush, I'm actually wearing it on my face right now. Hmm, let's put some of that on my lips. I didn't try it on my lips. Oh, I hadn't tried that on my lips, but that is that color on lips. It's very pretty. I actually did try this one on my lips. I did not like the color on my lips at all, but this one, I really like this color. And these are officially called the Cheek Squad. I hope they come out with other shades because I think I think it's a great kind of dupe, at least visual dupe, to the Kaja products. I did use the Dewy Blush by Say in Spicy. This is so beautiful. This is such a beautiful, blendable shade. I will swatch it for you. But this product in general, it's such a nice product. You only need the tiniest dot. That will probably be too much and you blend it out and it has this beautiful toasty kind of color to it. Actually, that was okay. So you'll see like this is the berry from the Ulta. It definitely has pink, it's brighter. This one has more of a burnt quality. Let me put a little bit more on so you could really see it. Now I definitely put too much. You, I hope you can see that it has this like browny ruddiness to it. So it gives off this really pretty effect like you have a sunburn that's healing. It's really, really beautiful. It's a very unusual color in my collection, and so I'm happy to have it. I also have the shade Rosy, which I will swatch for you as well. This is sort of like your neutral pink, but I really love these same blushes. The Say blushes, they dry down to almost like a powdery, diffused type of finish which is very flattering and yet it has this like natural sheen to it, but there's no sparkle. I don't know how it does it. It's a very beautiful, unusual product and I really love these. And I had gotten this set of four of the mini Merit set. This are, are all the little cheek blushes 
that they just came out with of the four new shades. So I have every single shade now in this line. This is one of my favorite formulations. I did not get to try every single color though this week. I did try the shade Persimmon, which is very similar to that Say color. Let me see, where am I gonna put this? But it has a little more orange to it and a little more vividness, but you could see there's the Say and there's the Merit Persimmon. So this one's very close. I don't think you need both. And the other shade that I used was the shade Après which I will swatch here. This one is like a more vivid fuchsia and it's very pretty. I hope to do a full swatch video of all the five original shades and these four new shades, but I still haven't played around with Stockholm or Fox. So I'm gonna keep these in the rotation for this week and make sure that I play around with them. And then maybe I'll do a full swatch review so that if you're looking to buy one of these, you know kind of the color comparisons. I mean, there's very few cheek products where I literally have every single color. That's one of them. Eyebrows, nothing exciting here. Just as I talk about every week, I'm still using the KVD Brow Struck in Light Brown. I love this powder. I hope they bring it back. Also, the Good Brow Day by Profusion in Soft Black. This micro pencil, great micro pencil, almost through with it. And what I brought back for this week was the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel in Dark Brown. Sometimes when I don't feel like filling in my brows, I just go for this if I'm especially doing a very natural kind of look that day. And I like what this does. This is very, very comparable to the Glossier Boy Brow, which I used to solely use as my like easy breezy type of eyebrow gel until I found this one. It's more economical and for me it works just as good. This week I was still using on my eyes the Tower 28 mascara. I'm on the fence with this one. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know. I don't know yet. It, it's almost a little too dry and the consequence of the lash is a little too natural. I'm not sure. I'm gonna keep playing around with this and methods of application. This is my second week playing with it. I'm not making any judgments. I will say it's not smudge at all, not on my lashes. So the smudging, great. Everything else though, I'm not sure about. I primed my eyes with both the Lorac primer as well as the Smashbox. Love them both, they're both equally as effective, but I did use both this week. And this week, the shadows that I played around with were from Sydney Grace. This is Sydney Grace and Temptalia on the Horizon eyeshadow palette. This is the light version, they come in two versions. This is the color story here. I will try to insert some looks. I don't know if I have very many looks that I took uh, pictures of. They're all very pretty shadows. There is something about this release that although such beautiful packaging, it's this like moon landscape, it's very pretty and the color story is beautiful. It's beautiful. And I love Sydney Grace's formula, but there is something I don't like about this. It was very, very hard for me to get inspired to use this palette. I have been putting off using this palette since I got it. Something about it just didn't grab me. And I think sometimes you just have to listen to your heart. There's nothing wrong with these shadows. They're just, they're as foiled as you would expect from Sydney Grace. These are the shot. I mean, this is so beautiful. This one's gorgeous. This one's beautiful. This one's beautiful. And if I swatch them and I continue to swatch them, I'm going to keep it and I will never use it. Oh, just so, so pretty. There's just something about this that I, 
I'm not going to feel bad about it anymore. I have felt bad about not loving this and I've just kept it. I kept it through every declutter. I've kept it. I've just kept it. And it's just for some reason, something's happening to me. So I'm not going to beat myself up. I have these colors in lots of other palettes that when I think of that palette, I think of these colors. Now the palette that I kind of brought out in its place in a weird way, uh, just because I just felt excited to use it is this one from Viseart. This is the Soleil La Plage. This one here, beautiful packaging. And I love this color story. This is the color story here. It's so pretty. I'm wearing two of the shadows lightly on my eyes today. I'm wearing these two right here, but I love these shadows. They blend so well. There's just a right balance of mattes. There's five mattes and the rest are sheens. And I just really like the sheens from Busy Art. I just think it's like just the right amount of sparkle for a day I look without going overboard. Sometimes even like with the Sydney Grace shadows, sometimes the metallics are too foiled. It's very hard to get a light, subtle look out of it. Lip liner I used this week was from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Lip Cheat in Iconic Nude. This I picked up at the Sephora sale. Everyone always has this like a list of one of their favorite nudes and I could see why. It has this like rosy tone to it. So it's not like a full brown nude. It has some rosiness in it and I think that's probably why people gravitate to it. I really loved wearing this. I wore this in connection with Hug Me by MAC, one of my favorite lipsticks of all time. It is a dupe for the Chanel Adrian lipstick, which actually did not work out for me. My lips just pruned out over wearing it over two days, so I actually brought it back, unfortunately. But it, um, I'm happy that I swatched a bunch of colors I had. It turns out, Hug Me, Hug Me was a dupe for that shade. So if you also are sensitive to fragrance, even though Max lipsticks have fragrance, but they've never dried out my lips. The fragrance that they use is subtle enough that it doesn't actually harm my lips in some way, but I did not have any luck with Chanel. I whipped out Am I Kiss or Bond Girl from Charlotte Tilbury, the Matte Revolution. This color is so pretty. It's like a rosy brownie, but more rosewood kind of color. I love, again, very similar to the MAC in that there is some fragrance in this, but it doesn't dry out my lips. It's matte, but it's like a comfort matte formula. It is not like a powdery matte. It's just kind of a blurring matte formula. I really do like the Charlotte Tilbury. Another color I wore this week was the Revlon Glass Shine Lipsticks in Cherries in the Snow. I will swatch this for you. These are impossible to get your hands on nowadays because Revlon has discontinued them. You could see it here, it's sort of this fuchsia. I love wearing it kind of blotted even with that iconic nude pencil and then just sort of blotting in the center, I can also build it up. It's such a beautiful color. It's so hydrating. I love this formula. Revlon, I really hope that they revamp the line, not discontinue it and just re-release all the shades because since going viral on TikTok, I mean, a response from a brand can't be, we discontinue that, like, no. Like, just make it again. Keep making it because people are that crazy for it. Why would you get rid of a product that everyone's nuts over? You should just be coming out with 20 more shades. I saw Jen Phelps talking about lip glosses. Was she decluttering lip glosses? I'm not sure, but she was going on and on about how much she loved the HoverGirl Clean Fresh Yummy Gloss. I picked one up. I picked mine up in the shade Flamingo Pink. I'm not gonna put this on my lips. This has a very nice doe foot, very plush. I will swatch it here. It has a, a very nice cushiony, super glossy, wet feel. The scent though is abhorrent. It is abhorrent. Oh my God. It smells like 
rancid Flintstone vitamins, like vitamins that have gone bad and that mixed with some weird, weird, weirdness, something very false, fake. I can't get past that. I also can't stand that it has a tiny bit of a sweet taste. I do not like products that have a bit of a taste to them. I like no taste, no taste, but I don't like when they taste bitter and I don't like if they taste sweet because if they taste sweet, I will just taste that throughout the day and I don't like that. Today when I wore it, it again, creates a really beautiful, I'll put it on, I don't want to, but I will. It's a really beautiful ugh, ugh, sheen, really wet looking, feels super plush and hydrating, non-sticky. But after about an hour of wear, this gets so sticky, so tacky, so gloopy, and it still feels thick on the lips. I don't like that. Wear down all the way or not but what do i do with lips that are just like sticky i was actually out walking in the park when that happened when that kind of the product turned on me and i was like what did i do now with my lips i didn't bring the lip gloss with me i thought it would just kind of like naturally wear down i wasn't drinking water i wasn't aggravating my lips it, i was just talking and walking and yeah i really don't like this i do not recommend this I much prefer from the drugstore, the NYX fat oils, way better. I don't understand why CoverGirl Clean Fresh would have put such a, like a false taste. I just don't understand. Just weird to me. Let me put this back on. This is one of my favorite lip glosses. This is the Catrice Powerful five glossy lip oil and it has hyaluron almond jojoba avocado and coconut oil this is a beautiful product this is in cherry blossom it is actually colorless and it has a little bit of that ph reactive thing but i don't find that it's an obnoxious type of color that forms it's not like a hot hot pink that forms it's a little more subtle that's the color that it forms and I think like that's subtle but definitely brought some life to my lips this has a lovely wear and it wears down and it feels like it's deeply hydrating your lips this I think comes in four shades I want to do a video on this because I think that this is one of the most underrated lip products and it's so affordable you can find them on Amazon you can order them on Catrice directly so this is the Catrice cherry blossom the lip oil and they also have a, a gloss that is just the in the same type of container but they're more opaque glosses I have those two I'll talk about those at a later date but it's the lip oil, the glossy lip oil that I'm talking about. It's such a good product. Mm. I just want to, I want to have this everywhere. I want to have one in my office, one at my desk, one by my nightstand. I like it that much. It's so, so comfortable and such a great price. And also, does it have a scent? I don't think it does. I don't think it has a scent, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If it has a scent, it's one that I can't really detect. Last but not least for the week, I tried to make sense of some fragrances because Sephora was nice enough <laughs> to send me a fragrance that I can't afford, that I really, really like. And that fragrance is the Killian Love Don't Be Shy. Oh my goodness. That little sample, I squirted it and I fell in love and I was like, oh my God, no. I'm not into like overtly sweet scents, but there was something about the chemistry of this one on my body that I loved. So I went through my fragrances and I started to pull out fragrances that I thought were kind of like sweet candy-like. And I've been wearing that to try to get me to not buy that Killian fragrance for $275. I moved on to the Ellis Brooklyn Sci-Fi. Now this one is a little sweet, but it's also fresh. 
This one might suit a lot of people. I liked it. It almost has like a citrus and sweet in it. I actually don't know what's in this, but I really do like the way it lingers. I just don't find that I, I, I smell it on me for long. I feel like it disappears too fast. Then I remembered I had, and although they don't sell it here in the States anymore, Atelier Cologne, I know still sold. And I have a bottle of the Vanilla Intense from them. This is one of my favorite vanilla colognes. This one here. Um, this one is very good. I actually had like a bit of a trial, travel size, trial size, something in between. This one has gone off. It smells like pure alcohol. This one is still good. This one is lovely. It, it has a vanilla smell, but it's not like you are a cookie. <laughs> you know, like it's vanilla with some complexity to it, but not going so far into the smokiness. It's just delicately vanilla. I really like this. I hope it's not gonna turn on me because as it stands, it sort of has a little bit too much of an alcohol, but that kind of evaporates quickly and I could still smell a lot of the fragrance. The other thing I used was the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Crush Cherosa in 68. This is Brazilian Jasmine and Pick Dragon Fruit. It's this one here. This is delicious. This smells very close to the fragrance that I want from Killian. The biggest difference is this does not last as long as the Killian one, but it's very delicious. I feel like this is gonna get me through summer if, if I can stop using it constantly, but I really like this. I, it's just sort of like cotton candy, yummy. I don't know, sometimes I, I wanna feel that way. I wanna, I, I want that smell around me and it's just, it's really delicious. So I do really like this. I like that I kind of rediscovered this whole vein of my fragrances. I have to keep going around my fragrances and like trying more and more, but really happy I've kind of focused on this. I still have the other one on my wish list. It will still be there. I will find a way to manifest getting it. But for right now, we're gonna enjoy all the fragrances that remind me of it. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs up if you did. Comment down below if you have any opinions about any of these products, even if they're differing opinions, I love to hear from you. And consider subscribing if you haven't already so that you can tune in to content that is not sponsored. I buy all my stuff and I don't mind giving some critical feedback to brands because I think they need to do a better job for us all. And so if you like that type of content, stay tuned. I hope everyone is doing well. Please be safe. I hope my message at the top of this wasn't too sobering, but yeah, we just have to be kinder with each other, check in with each other and be aware of our surroundings. Let's not ignore things around us and let's get the right people to help other people. So I hope everyone has a beautiful start to the week and we'll talk soon. Take care, everyone.